Hey everyone, this is going to be continuation of introduction session on Apache Spark. In this session, we are going to discuss about ecosystem of Spark, which will help us understand how the components of Spark are attached together. The ecosystem of Spark has two layers, one being the core layer and the other one is libraries. These two layers are the actual Spark ecosystem components. But in order to understand Spark better, we also need to know some of the components under the hood that comes into picture when a Spark job runs. So the center of attraction for the Spark or the ecosystem of Spark is Spark Core. The Spark Core itself has two parts. The one is Spark Core API and the other one is the distributed processing engine, which is the Spark execution engine. The whole thing of Spark runs on a cluster and offers distributed processing. So the compute cluster is where the entire Spark application will be running. And we know that Spark is just a processing engine and it needs a cluster manager. Spark does not provide any cluster manager by default and we need to have a cluster manager. In general, the cluster managers available are AN, Mesos or Kubernetes. So we, we see the Spark on top of Hadoop most of the times. AN comes by default with Hadoop. So AN is the most frequently used cluster manager for Spark. And the recent versions of Spark are also compatible with Kubernetes. And the other thing is Spark also does not offer any storage by default, but it allows processing the data that is stored in distributed file system or a distributed storage. So the distributed storage systems that are available for us are S3, HDFS or Azure or Google file system or Google Cloud platform. The data can be stored in any of these file system or any of these distributed storages. Spark is capable of processing the data that is present in all of these file systems. And now it's clear that for cluster management, Spark is dependent on and Mesos or Kubernetes and for storages and for storage, it's dependent on some of the storage systems. But we also have the Spark execution engine. But what does this Spark execution engine does? So Spark execution engine will break down the job into tasks and submit the tasks in cluster for parallel execution. And it also provides data for these tasks to execute and it also supports managing and monitoring these tasks and spark execution engine also provides fault tolerance whenever there is a failure of any task we will discuss about failure scenarios and the fault tolerance when we talk about spark architecture in the upcoming session and the spark execution engine also helps interact between the cluster and the storage manager if we are using Spark framework, all we do is to submit the Spark application to the Spark cluster and rest everything will be taken care by Spark itself. Now the other part of the Spark core API is the programming languages. So we can use SQL, Python, Scala, R or Java to write our application using Spark. Whenever we write our application using Python, Scala, R or Java, the application will be based on RDDs. So it is very tricky or little complex to write any application based on RDDs because RDDs are the lowest level of abstraction provided by Apache Spark. If we look at the libraries, it is the topmost layer or it is the primary area of interest for most of the developers or most of the Spark users and it contains libraries, packages, and APIs developed by Spark community on top of the core APIs. We code using these libraries, but internally they get converted into Spark core APIs and goes into the Spark execution engine. The libraries or the core libraries in Spark are divided into four categories, Spark SQL and data frames. So I said earlier that if we code in Python, Scala, R or Java, the initial applications were built based on RDDs. But now we have one more layer called the data frames or data sets. We can write our code using the data frames or data sets and Spark will optimize. And among these libraries, Spark SQL is used to write queries 
or SQL like queries in Spark. And the data frame and data set allows us using the functional programming to solve data processing problems. And streaming, Spark streaming is used for processing the continuous stream of data. And machine learning library in Spark contains the set of libraries for machine learning, deep learning, AI related algorithms, and AI related requirements. GraphX is used for graph processing algorithms. Like if you don't know what graph processing algorithms are, if you consider, for example, LinkedIn, person A might be following person B, and person B will be following person C and D, and person D might be following back person A. So the entire chain of connections will be maintained with the help of graph algorithms. Not only in LinkedIn, but any social networking applications like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of these uses graph algorithms for storing the interconnection between the users. So the entire stack that is visible to us now is the ecosystem of Spark. Now, why Spark is so popular? We already had Hadoop, MapReduce, HDFS, but why Spark is so popular? The first reason being the abstraction available in Spark. It means that you can use any of the programming languages among the available ones like Python, R, Scala, and Java. The rest of the things like cluster management, storage, parallelism, failures, fault tolerance, everything will be taken care by Spark. You need not worry about the failure scenarios, parallelism, storage, and all those things. So Spark will take care of everything. The other reason is that unified engine. Spark is an unified engine. How? We can use SQL queries. We can use Spark for branch processing. We can use Spark for streaming processing. We can use Spark for machine learning algorithms and graph algorithms. All of these in a single framework called Spark. This is why Spark is called as a unified distributed computing engine. And the other reason for Spark to be uh, famous is that Spark is very easy to use. If we compare Spark with MapReduce, it is very easier, simpler, and we have a growing ecosystem in Spark. And there are a lot of libraries and algorithms which are ready to use available in Spark. So that's all for this discussion. See you in the upcoming session. Thank you.